All right. Hey guys, um, I wanted to do a quick rundown of some of the synthesizer basics. As um, you know, a lot of people, if you know me well, you know me in real life. Uh, you know, I have a big passion for these things. Uh, I recently posted an unboxing video of some of the other toys I've recently picked up, and it kind of struck me that. Uh, maybe a lot of the people that I know or uh, don't really know what the hell this is all about or what I'm into or why I like this so much So I thought I'd just do a little brief introduction on um, This is my mini log um, About some of the fundamentals of synthesis so you can kind of figure out what it is I might like about it and maybe uh, spark an interest in you about some of this stuff uh, So I just wanted to go over really quickly uh, two of the most important parts of synthesis which are the voltage control oscillators, or your oscillators, your waveform generators, and then your amp uh, envelope generator, your amplitude uh, controls. Um, these two things come together to, in my opinion, have the biggest effect on the overall shape of the sound and what you end up with, uh, what you produce. And so uh, synthesis is a lot about um, messing around with these two things. Uh, synthesis is unique in that um, it's both an, uh, an instrument that you play uh, and it's also there's a, there's a deeply creative process behind just generating the sound that you play from scratch. Um, I, <laughs> I have to admit I'm not very capable at uh, the former. I'm not a very good player. Um, I will do my best to just kind of demonstrate some sounds here for you but um, you know, if you're going to look for, like, sick riffs and stuff, I'm sorry, that's... Oop, pardon the uh, microwave going off. Um, that's another video. You'll have to uh, wait for that or go check something else out. Um, but enough about that. Let's just dive right into this. Um, first part are your voltage-controlled oscillators, um, your wave generators. Uh, these generate waveforms in the audible frequency, somewhere between 20 hertz and 2,000 hertz. Um that you can hear. These are where like the very core of the sound comes from. If these aren't here, then nothing works. Um, three very common uh, waveforms that you'll see are present on this synthesizer. Uh, you have your sawtooth wave. Uh, I just want to point out also, you'll see this is a oscilloscope that comes built in on the mini log, which is kind of a cool function. And how I'm able to sort of demonstrate this, this will help a lot. Um, You'll see here that the sawtooth wave is named because it looks like the teeth of a saw or like a steak knife or something. If you take a peek over here, you'll see when I play this middle C that you get a shape that has a sharp peak and then it drops off. And then you hit it immediately ramps up to another peak and then drops off. This gives you a tone that's kind of regarded as sort of bright or maybe like a little bitey. It's got like a little bit of a buzz to it. Um, as opposed to the triangle wave, which is described as kind of having like a warmth or a fuzz. And so you can hear that that's already like a lot softer sounding. Uh, and then lastly, we have the square wave, which is just a binary on off. This has kind of like a fat sound to it. So do that again. Uh, sawtooth is, again, bright or kind of bitey. The triangle wave with its warmth. And the fatter square wave. Um, this has two oscillators, so I can demonstrate quickly that... Um, Having multiples of these allows you to do a couple different kind of tricks, where like in this case, I can take a square wave and then a triangle wave, an octave below that, and this gives us kind of like a bassy sound that we'll hear a lot of in uh, different tracks. Oh, whoops, let me actually bring that in. And you can see how that triangle, as I bring that in, I'll, with it off, and then as I bring it in, you'll see this change. Um, but that adds like that richness to the lower end. Uh, 
down. It doesn't, uh, a whole octave down is kind of uh, drastic. We don't, it doesn't have to be that. Uh, but even at just uh, 15, it gives it kind of like a, a weird reverberation to it that as we go lower, you can hear. Gives it almost like a Hoover sort of sound. But um, if we go way too low, it just sort of craps out. And we get this nothing. So creating something that's usable, but also um, knowing like the register that it's audible at is important. Uh, we can go up with that. And we get, uh, I don't know, sort of like a weird lead. Something that, I don't know, maybe would be good for like a bell sound. I don't know. Uh, so that's the kind of the basics of that. You've got those three waveforms. They interact in different ways. Uh, on this particular synthesizer, we have two of them to play with. Uh, and we can change their shapes, what octave each one is at. Uh, the balance between the two. Um, this is really nice. I like this a lot. I'm not trying to sell anyone on this synthesizer. I just really like it. Uh, moving on, we have the uh, amplitude envelope generator, which is this top bank of knobs here. Uh, the uh, four knobs are your attack, decay, sustain, and release. Uh, these four properties describe um, the overall shape of the sound as it hits um, in terms of like the volume or amplitude of it. Um, so right now we have a sound that is all sustain, and what that means is when I trigger the note, it immediately hits peak volume, stays there until I let go, and then is immediately gone. So it's a very like binary on-off kind of sound at maximum sustain. Note, no note, note, no note. As soon as I hit this, it's at volume, then it's gone when I let go. If I start to play with this though, uh, I can add some attack to it and some decay. Uh, let's do it in sort of that order. Um, attack, this will, this will sound kind of weird. Um, I'll put the sustain at like half, and I'm gonna put the decay at sort of like a medium pace. Uh, attack and decay and release are all time-based, whereas sustain is a volume. Um, sustain is an amount, the other three envelopes are for length. Uh, so by putting the amp or the attack at uh, sort of halfway, we get a medium length. And what that means is you'll hear as I trigger this note, now instead of just immediately going to the sustain volume, it'll actually take a second to ramp up. And then because I have no decay, it'll snap down to whatever the sustain is. So you'll watch it, the, the wave will grow in size and then snap down to like a smaller shape like it did that. Uh, the attack is that that hum as it builds towards its volume in the very beginning. That pop right there is it hitting a decay that's non-existent. And then it goes to this level, which is the sustain that I have set at. If I crank that up, you'll see it grows. If I turn it back down, it's very slight. So with it way down there, it should be even more obvious as attack then it hits the decay and goes to the sustain. If I give it some decay, now we'll have a smoother up and then down to that sustain. Let's listen to that. See, now we have that gentle hit to the peak at the top of the attack, and then it decays back down to the sustain. And that's what that does. Uh, if I get rid of the attack, what we'll have is a, a note that hits immediately because the attack is now very, very short. Um, yeah, oh, well, instant, pretty much. Um, well, it'll just immediately go to the decay, which will then take this amount of time to go down to the sustain level. So it's just hitting and then immediately decreasing down to the sustain. Uh, if I get rid of the sustain completely, all we listen to is decay. And it doesn't matter that I continue to hold the note down because the sustain level is non-existent. All we get to listen to is that decay part of the envelope, that peak and then a drop. Let's bring these all back up to about halfway. So that gives us this again, that increase, decay, and then we ride the sustain until I let go. 
if we get rid of the attack and the decay, I'll give it all the sustain, and then I'll add a little bit of release to it. Release is the final portion. It's after I've released the trigger how long that sound kind of lingers for, which sounds like this. We've got just all sustain. There's no attack, no decay. We just go right into the maximum volume, and then when I let go, it gently sort of fades out now. everything kind of nominal. This will give us a whole attack. Oh, right, because I have the <laughs> derf. Let's do that again. I forgot, I, with the sustain at maximum, decay doesn't really do much. Um, it's very hard to notice that there's any decay at all when you have sustain maxed out. But now up, down to the sustain, and then release. Give it a little bit more release so you can really hear that. Attack, decay, we're at sustain, and then release. Notice with this, um, this is a particular quirk of this synthesizer. Um, you'll hear that um, there's a pop because we're in mono mode. Uh, as I trigger different notes, it re-triggers the entire envelope. There is a way that I can change that configuration. I just haven't set it for this patch. Um, you'll, well, I'll try to demonstrate that. How it's canceling the other note and then going into a, um, a whole new envelope for that amplitude. If I put it in poly mode, I think it should not do that. We do get a little bit of odd reverberation going around there. Um, I guess while we're on the topic, I should explain the, the quickly the last thing before we go. is the difference between poly and mono. Um, a monophonic means you can only trigger one note at a time, um, though some monophonic synthesizers do have different modes where they're maybe paraphonic or duophonic, things like that. Um, for the most part, monophonic just means that you have uh, one note at a time. Let's fix this envelope to just back to the old all or nothing. Um, so you can hear that I can, if I play this note while I'm holding this key down and I play another note, it just overrides it. One note at a time, whichever note is the newest one triggers. If I quickly like play a couple different notes, we'll never even hear this lower note. You wouldn't even know that that's there. If I give it a little bit of time though, it'll jump back and forth. And you might use that for things where you're like, Stuff like that. Um, sometimes that comes in handy when you want to do little like uh, arpeggiations or things like that. Uh, polyphonic means it can just, it, it's poly, it can play more than one sound at a time. So you can end up playing chords. Things like that. Uh, in this case, if I hold one note, That's a, that's a very big, big difference um, in synthesizers, and um, when buying them or trying to play them, um, it really, <laughs> you really got to know which, if whether it's a poly or a mono ahead of time, otherwise you're going to get two very different beasts out of it. Um, in 2016, you might be wondering, why do you even bother making anything monophonic anymore? Um, it For different styles of things. Um, and different purposes, depending on what you want to do with the synthesizer. Uh, a good example of this in terms of other instruments is like a, a guitar versus a bass guitar. A uh, regular guitar you do want, you know, you play chords on a regular guitar, but on a bass guitar you really don't. You would rather have one, like, more clear voice that you could, like, I don't know, play around with. Um, uh, it's kind of like, a, I guess, a big difference. There's a lot of other arguments that could be made about poly versus mono, but really what I, what's important to know is that like polyphonic isn't always like strictly better than monophonic. They do have different uses. There's a reason why this has two different modes and not just poly all the time here. Uh, sometimes, you, like I said, you want that sound where you're trying to go 
mm -hmm. for like very quick uh, like arpeggiations like that. Though this also does have an arpeggiator mode. I don't know. It has a time and a place. That's a whole other argument for another time. <laughs> What's important to know for now is that you've got uh, the two fundamental parts, uh, the very core of almost every subtractive synthesizer are your wave generators, your oscillators, and then your um, envelope generator to give you your amplitude and your tone shaping. So there you have that. Um, hopefully you can understand a little bit more of what's going on, and um, if you get a little bit of a spark of imagination, you might start to figure out some of the very different sounds you can create just using um, a couple wave generators and then a simple uh, amp envelope. Um, I'd like to do a couple more of these if people like them, if uh, people like think that either Either I'm somehow speaking to you in a manner you can understand, or I'm just so weird that I'm interesting to listen to. We can get around to some other things. I'll keep using this guy. Uh, we can talk about like the filter, the LFO, uh, what is the difference between a ring mod and some other stuff. It'll be a good time. But uh, hey, I hope um, this was at least easy enough to digest that you kind of get a picture of what it is I'm always doing on these things, why I'm always talking about them so much.